All right, everyone, we are here with Jordan Budd. Ma'am, how are we doing today? Man, doing good. Awesome. Doing good. Getting ready to go on a caribou hunt next week. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Lot. Everything seems to happen last minute. So, um, what are, are we doing? Archery or are we doing rifle? That's archery. Yeah, that's an archery hunt. And it's like an only archery hunt. There's no option for rifle. So, it's either, it's either a bow or nothing. Oh, heck yeah. Um, who did we, we just talked to, uh, Reese. Yeah. Reese Johnson. He's headed up and well, probably around the same time, actually August 10th is what he said he was leaving. Opener. Yeah. We leave the eighth. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be open. Yeah. 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 He's headed up. I think he's going to do rifle. Uh, it's an outfitted service, uh, that he's going through. I can't think of the name of the guy that he said, but, um, still nice. that would be, that'd be a blast for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, before we get too far in the weeds, let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I know you, uh, you have a lot of hats, so let's go ahead and, and uh, introduce yourself and kind of give the yeah. audience, uh, what all you do. Okay. So originally from Northwest Nebraska, grew up on a cattle ranch, my family's place. So grew up doing a whole ranch deal and still do it now. Um, I just go back and forth and, uh gosh and then when i would say when i was in high school um i started doing some outfitting type stuff on the ranch so that's still going it's running water hunting like i've been doing it for quite a while now um it's really ramping up and doing well and then on the other side of it uh also when i was in college i got started getting into media production and just carrying a camera around with me and doing all that stuff and when i got into college uh you know, just started meeting people and meeting people in the outdoor industry through the outfitting and just, you know, how things work. You don't really understand it, but yeah. it seemed to have all like came around, met the right people, uh, got a job working in Cody, Wyoming with a gun manufacturer filming their TV show. And I did that for two years, uh, like contracting two years full time. And then I ended up uh, opening, like keeping, I guess, keeping running water media going and, uh, keeping that whole deal going and working for some companies, just filming hunts for people. So that really, I don't know, that really propelled me into a lot of like different hunts and stuff. So, um, it fed into being a gear junkie a lot cause I could use a lot of different things for whatnot. So, um, as I was doing all that as well, there's a website called rockslide.com yep. and they have a big forum like big Western hunting community, like mountains, backpacking, like they're all about that. And uh, so I started writing for them, doing gear reviews for them. And then in 2018, I uh, approached them about, I think it was 2018 or 19. Um, I approached them about doing a podcast um, about gear just because like every podcast does an episode on gear a yeah. year maybe before they go, but nobody really has one for the whole thing. So we started that with them and been doing that for quite a while now. Um, I'm gonna say, and yeah, yeah. I think I was like, last time I checked, there was like me, I think a, a little over 200 episodes, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, yeah. 200 like originals. And then we do that titchy Tuesday thing mm -hmm. every other week, it's like a news deal. So, you know, tack on another few for that. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's cool because I've seen, you know, there, yeah. there are a variety of lengths. They're not super long. Um, which is, which is nice or easy to consume. I think I've seen some as little as maybe like less than 20 minutes and then some, is, minutes, yeah, yeah. And as I say, most of them around that 45 to an hour. So we try to keep ourselves around that ballpark too, just because it's, it's quick and easy to consume. It makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Just like not do the super long drawn on out, all that stuff. I think ours is like pretty technical. Like we usually just get right into it and yep. pump out the info and then say, see you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, I, I won't name, you know, there's certain, there's certain podcasts out there that like the, the BS or like an hour before they get into the guest. And that's yeah. just not who we are too. Like we, we want to make sure that we get right into it and start talking about the person and then, you know, thanks for listening. See you later. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You definitely have your, you definitely have a lot of hats and you just got married this year. So congratulations on that as yeah. well. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know uh, Jonah, who we had, he was he was really excited to be able to uh, be there and, you know, capture all those memories for you. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we had a, yeah, we had a blast. And Jonah, that guy is just gnarly anyways, and it works out since you just had him on your podcast. Like, yeah. 
he texted me on like a Wednesday morning and said, Hey man, I'm leaving or Wednesday afternoon or something. It was like, Hey, leaving, you know, it was a long ways from Boise, Idaho to, um, like Des Moines basically. Yeah. And he's like, Hey man, just leaving. It's like, all right, well we were on our way up there Thursday and we were doing something at like 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And he texts me and he's like, Hey, I'm two hours from Boise. Like where, <laughs> where do you want me to go? Or should I stay? And I was like, Go to sleep, first of all. <laughs> go get a room somewhere and go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he cracks me up. Not- um, so he has a, a mutual friend that was on our pro staff team, um, Isaiah Dressback. I'm sure you've seen their videos uh, when he's up here in mm-hmm. Ohio. And um, we had talked to him. And then, like, him and Casey, like, the very next time I saw, they were like, oh, we're in Ohio. And it's like, man, like, Iowa to Ohio is not, like, a an easy, quick, John, it's not like I'm just popping over to Kentucky or something. Like you guys are no. just like balling around all over the state or all over the country. I mean, heck, they were they, what they say they were in like Arizona and Texas at least a couple times. Yeah, they traveled a they quite traveled a, bit a ton last year. Last year. So, mm-hmm. but, but those guys are putting out some really cool content. So it was mm-hmm. cool to cool for them to get on and cool for them to connect us with YouTube because it's just a big you know a big family. It's I say it all the time, but it's really funny how mm-hmm. small the industry technically is. Like everybody knows everybody, you know, and it's just, it makes it so enjoyable to be able to talk to different people across the country. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We don't have much, uh, mountain hunting over here, obviously. So it's cool <laughs> yeah. to have that connection yeah. to bring you on yeah. the podcast and talk about some mm-hmm. of that stuff. Yeah. Cause yeah, yeah, the, the furthest I've mountain hunt, mountain hunted, if you will, would be like hiking Athens and like yeah. Wayne, like Hills, the Appalachian Hill. Yeah. The, the yeah. West Virginia mountain range, Appalachian mountain range isn't not, not comparable. Mm-hmm. It's still tough, but mm-hmm. it's not anything like what they're doing out there. So, um, before we kind of get into that mountain stuff, I wanted to give you the opportunity. Let's dive into a little bit of your outfitted service because Nebraska is, okay. um, I think it's kind of, there's always been really good, like mule deer conversation in the sand hills and stuff but i know you do a little bit of white tail as well um and we can kind of touch on the the first light video for that but kind of give us like a layout of as, as guys that are just like midwestern over soybean over corn kind of guys here uh what's the challenge that you have with your outfitted service and what you guys got going on there in, in western nebraska yeah so we've got like we do the basic like turkeys white tail we do have purebred merriams which is handy yeah um but so we do whitetail and we do mule deer as well but we're right on the nybrae river so uh it's like we're mostly whitetail i would say yeah. we're like 90 percent whitetail maybe 10 percent mule deer and honestly that's even gone downhill since i was in high school it's just i don't know numbers in general just aren't great and then especially buck numbers and some of that has to do with nebraska you know just in the past this year is going to change but in the past they've opened pretty much everything up to like um and muzzleloader and archery tags were uncapped so you okay. could buy whatever and you could everybody could get two buck tags and then you have a rifle season that runs in the middle of the rut so like it makes sense that yeah. things are just going to get shot up right so yeah. um we've like been struggling on our mule deer um and some of that is just like we're kind of on the fringes of it anyways like whitetail just yeah. inhabit the river you know much more powerfully and then they just they're more aggressive from what mm-hmm. i hear they're sure. just like more aggressive is like mule deer just don't really put up with them they just, they'll just leave so yeah. that's like some of the battles there but like we got we have good whitetail hunting for sure um we have some decent like decent mule deer hunting we don't take very many people at all and the way we kind of structure it is we're really trying to, what do you call it, even like favor not shooting a small one just to yeah. shoot a mule deer type of deal. So, um, yeah, but it's a really fun hunt. There's like, uh, we hunt them on the transition between their feeding and, and bedding. And <clears throat> that's typically like across a wide open pasture. Yeah. And uh, so like muzzleloader, rifle, or even hunt with archery equipment sometimes we can just try to ambush them basically on their way like in the wide open and you wouldn't even think that it would work sometimes but it, it works yeah. pretty good especially with the gun but um and then archery wise like we're in the bottom you know we've got pine trees it's yeah. kind of like cut up um like 
not cliffy, but it's a little rougher country and sure. pine trees. And then on the river bottom, we got hardwoods. So we use tree stands a lot and blinds too. Yeah, I was going to say, and, uh, that, was yeah. the, that was one thing I noticed from like the first light video, which we had kind of t touched on a little bit. That was my first introduction mm -hmm. into you and what you have going on. And, you know, you, you think in Nebraska and, and you know, somewhat rightfully so, but you just think of like, you know, uh, farmland, right? Just flat farmland. I mean, that's just typical yeah. what you think of that, that corner, that section of the state, but like, it was neat to see that you guys were able to get up in a tree and basically hunt them the same way that we would hunt them here in Ohio. There was really no difference here. Yeah. You know, you're looking at a lot of, like, like you said, transition land or transition areas or, you know, bedding areas or feeding, or, you know, especially if there's really not much for them to browse on, you know, you're with down in those bottoms, you're going to get a lot more, I guess, uh, green up if you will. And so it gives them the opportunity to be down in there. But yeah, that was yeah. a, that was a huge, a huge thing, you know, for me to take away from it. And it's like, oh man, like the, it isn't just corn, which, mm. <laughs> you know, you get the stigma of being, but that whole like Western side of the state is, is completely different. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like we get a lot of guys from back east that come out, and a few of them have said the same thing that have really got to like step back on some of these big hills and glass a long ways and yep. watch the deer do their thing. They're like, the deer are doing this where we're from. Also, you just can't see it. Yeah. And so you can like you can see it from there, which is also which is good and bad. Like um, they're in the wide open, you can't really it's yeah. you're pretty limited on where you put stands because yeah. mm -hmm. there's yeah. not trees just everywhere. So, um, that's like where some blinds come in and even then they're just, I don't know, they're just tricky, but it's open country whitetails. It's pretty fun. Oh, for sure. And you can kind of, we talked to, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, John Eberhart. Um, he is the saddle, like the saddle hunting OG, but they go to, uh, Kansas yeah. quite a bit with the draw, like whenever they, whenever they draw for Kansas and he hunts them very much that same way. He's like, you know, in Kansas, it was, I would imagine it's the same as Nebraska. You know, you have these big open ag land, and then it's like you may have a low deer density, but they're always going to be kind of populated in that one little finger or that one little mm -hmm. area of timber where they can actually have some security cover. And so you just, you know, set up shop in there and kind of wait and see what you can find. So, yeah. <clears throat> I would like to see a deer at like 700 yards and watch them instead of like the 150 that I got right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's go in here. Yeah. So then, like I said, we, my first introduction, like I said, was, uh, with the first light video and, and tough. And so that was a really yeah. cool video. Just talking about you and your family history. Can you kind of run us through like what all went behind that? And for those of you who are watching, it's on first lights channel, just type in like Jordan, Bud tough. And it's going to be like the first thing you see, but that gives you a really good idea of what she's talking about here. Yeah. So they, uh, yeah, they came out, gosh, I'm trying to even think when that was, it was like 17 or 18. Yeah. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. 19, something like that. Um, yeah. They came out like Max Benz is the mm -hmm. first life producer and he came out and sat in the tree with me for a bit and we just, um, gosh, I haven't watched it in so long. I almost got to think about it. <laughs> like it was even about but there's they basically put a spin on uh i had was my dad in that uh yeah i think was he i think so i, don't think I think so, so he yeah. yeah the other one the new the newer one i'm getting them mixed up but yeah. anyways they basically talk about how um i think it was me anyways my grandma came over from czechoslovakia yeah. my great how'd that be my great grandma she was like 16 yep. by herself crazy stuff and i'm sure that she endured a lot of hell but uh they were talking about they kind of made a play off of that of like being tough and then just um uh i'm like a i don't know if you want to call it like a self-starter but sort of in a way like you know my parents i was very fortunate where i grew up and where like I got, that was a resource that I got to take advantage of that not everybody does. And that was good. Um, but like, and my parents have always helped me do whatever, but I've kind of been like, if you don't, you just go do it by yourself. If like, you don't have to always have somebody to go with you to go do something. And so they've always just supported me in doing that. But I've always definitely been kind of like, I don't care about going by myself. Yeah. Like I just prefer going by myself most of the time. <laughs> oh, so sure. um, that's basically what that that was about. And I shot uh, I shot a deer 
yep. there at the the place, which is probably the last year that I've shot on the on the range. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that's like yeah, four for... years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You get so, back at it. You get back at it. And get you another been, one. It's been guiding. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that takes precedent for sure. But no, that yeah. that video was cool. It was like it had all like the throwback pictures and stuff that they had. And then I remember I can I can visualize like your great grandma like standing in front of like her like pioneer like a little pioneer house. It was really cool. Um, just to yeah. see all that. And I would highly recommend it. It was, uh, first light does such an amazing job with like their videos that they pump out and have a meaning behind all of them. And that one was no exception by, um, yeah, they're good. So kind of staying on that, on that, that line of thinking or that, that side of you. Um, I know you have your own YouTube channel as well. Um, you got some awesome content mm -hmm. on there as well. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about you. And I know you probably have some stuff on there that you've seen before, Ben. But mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and talk about your YouTube channel and some of the videos that you create. Yeah, I would say that most of them that I've done are like, I very much do not have a schedule for right. mine. Like, they do not come out every whatever. No, I sure. usually, like, I try to turn them around as quick as I can once we're done with the hunt or once we're done with the season. I try to get them out. But um, I started probably the first first like real if you even call it a series that i did was in 2018 i filmed all my hunts i had a lot of hunts that year i had uh i had wyoming elk where i shot a bull i had arizona elk where i shot a bull um <clears throat> colorado deer which i didn't shoot a deer and then i almost feel like there's another one but those three were like probably the three that were like self-filmed i like really put some time into them um, and kick those out and that started it and then uh, I guess the year before I did a Wyoming deer one that was probably that got a lot of good response it made me want to do the next year um, yeah and then it just seems like things kind of changed for a couple of years and I didn't film as much of myself but I was filming a bunch of other people um, I did a couple hunts with crispy boots um, done quite a few with rock slide now and doing stuff like that and those are all out like on their youtube channel um and then just this last year we we put a few out yep. and uh they're kind of funny because we have we got a puppy yep mm -hmm. little golden uh, field golden retriever and we could put her in our backpacks yep and that's basically how we carry her <laughs> took awesome. her with us i called yeah there was like i went down to try to call a bull in and uh, there were some cows that came out like right behind me and I could just I could just see her out of the corner of my eye with her little head sticking out of the backpack and she's like what the hell is yeah. that yeah there was mm -hmm. definitely there was definitely some cute scenes in there too like I remember you um I think you were walking up and you had her like cradled like a baby yeah and, yeah. and you're you could just yeah. see like <laughs> you're like exhausted you're like here not only am I like back country right now but I'm carrying a 30 pound dog or 40 pound dog and it's like yeah, that same video yeah. too. Like we talked about it before, but it had yeah. some stuff in there, like from the behind the gun uh, video, where like just you know, like yeah. showed the snow and everything. Yeah, yeah it did. Yeah, and uh, stuff from my phone, and that was all self footage that I just took from my phone. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, and I like the there was a scene in there too. I think where she, you guys had just set up your tent for like the night, and then like, she was just like, <sighs> and it's like. Pat was passing out on like the sleeping pads and stuff. And it's like, yeah. well, yeah. go ahead and get yourself comfortable. Like we won't have a <laughs> spot to sleep, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's been, uh, her name is Edna, Edna and she's been a hit. That's awesome. She's this... not going to get carried around this year though. No, she's going to have to earn her keep. <laughs> yeah. She's going to have to walk herself. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, another funny, cool, uh, not funny, but another really cool video. Um, so I, I was like on this, like hook, Ben knows I was like looking at cargo trailers for like, I think Greg <laughs> Farrell, Greg Farrell kind of like started it off for me with the, the first like yeah. trailer that they got, yeah. those guys are using. And I was like, damn, like I need to get one of those. Like they have the Gambriel like outside and then just like hoisting their deer up. And I'm like, that's, those are sweet. And that would be super awesome to have. And then, so I'm searching it and like, I hadn't, it's been a while since I saw the tough video and then like you popped up again. I was like, Oh shit. Like that's, there's Jordan. Like let's watch her stuff. Like I remember seeing her on some of the mm -hmm. other stuff, but like, go ahead and like kind of talk about like the rationale behind making that camper. Cause it's pretty sweet. Yeah. So I needed a, uh, I needed a better way, like a better trailer to carry, to pull my side by side mm -hmm. around to some of the other hunts that we're doing. And we use it on obviously on the ranch all the time and all that. So, sure. uh, I was like, well, I could get it 
uh, I started looking at like just open, just regular trailers, right? And I'm like, you buy a new one of those, and you get one with like dual axle, a little mm-hmm. heavier duty type trailer, and you're like about the price of a cargo trailer. Yeah, just getting it, you know, getting in, getting a trailer. So we uh, started looking at those. And just went down the rabbit hole of YouTube, and I started seeing what some of these people were doing with them. And I'm like, maybe we could make a camper out of it. Oh, and sure. then I even looked at, you know, going the next step above and spending a hell of a lot more money and getting, like, a toy hauler or something like that. But they're really long. Like, you can't get them very short, um, you know. And at the time, I had, like, a half ton, like, gas. I couldn't yep. pull that much. And... uh so I literally just started looking at YouTube videos. I was like, hey, you, you, you could do some stuff with that. Like, we could make it very basic. So that's basically what we did. Like, um, I got, once I got it, I ripped the side walls out or just unscrewed them, I guess, yeah. and then insulated it. Uh, the floor is still not insulated, but now the ceiling is and all the walls. Um, so it's somewhat insulated. And then I threw some basic, like, electrical. It's just 12-volt. Um got a generator we've got like a flip up table i mean we got a tv and a dvd player yeah. in it now which is pretty sweet and uh yeah and then the bed in the back um works like off of an e-track system and yep. then when i'm putting it down to fit the side by side in it the boards fit inside the wheelbase of the side by side so i just drive right over the top of it and it's pretty tight it's 14 foot there are a lot of times i wish i had a 16 but there were like earlier this spring when we were taking it out there was a couple times where like trying to turn around on some roads that were like still socked in with snow and stuff stuff we shouldn't even have driven down in the first place (laughs) um we couldn't we wouldn't have been able to turn around with even a 16 foot so that 14 like you can get you can take it back on some places and like get it get you pretty you know close to some areas there's some of those like big campers that like, good yeah. luck. You got to stay way out oh, from yeah. where you even want to be because you can't get it there. So, that was the basics behind it. We've got, like, um, we've got a kitchen set up just in the front of the Beano's. There's, a like, a countertop type thing. And we've got cabinets hung up and some organizational stuff. And it's very simple. And it was yeah. my first go at a lot of things. So, I learned a lot, but it's very like simple, functional. If anything goes wrong with that thing, like I can fix it. So, oh, sure. Yeah. And you're not, you it, don't have this like $40,000, you know, camper that you're trying to like not damage or whatever. And I had been looking out and you're probably familiar. The guys from Hushin, they're always showing those, um, oh shoot, uh, jumping jack trailers where yeah. they're like driving their quads up on top. And that was like, man, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. It's not really practical for like what, what we have here. You know what I mean? I'm only, you know. 500,000 yards away from like the next hunting spot. So I could just, you know, go, go home or whatever. But like you, I went down that rabbit hole with, uh, some of the, the cargo stuff. And then like, next thing you know, you're watching like 15 videos and 15 different styles. And some people got the, the full works and some people are just like, you know, bare bones. I got what I got and I don't need anything else. And it was yeah. cool. It was cool. I mean, you got like sound system and like you said, DVD player, like you guys are living it up. Yeah. You even put a oh, yeah. shower in there too, right? Yeah. Like yeah, so we put out, that's been on the, yeah, we've changed. So some things have changed with the trailer since we've done that video. Oh. And I need to do another one. Um, yeah, we insulated the ceiling and put like that corrugated steel mm-hmm. up there. I don't know if I'd recommend that again because that stuff sucks to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, but gosh, what else did we do with it? Um, yeah, the shower deal I got like. I really don't love the whole overlander thing, but yeah. I got one of their showers that like it collapses into a, it's supposed to sit on the top of your, like a topper or something. Yeah. And then it folds, it folds out like these bars fold out. Um, I put that in there and we used it and it's like, we need to make some adjustments on it and um, customize it a little bit to fit like our shower pan, which the shower pan is a freaking cement tub mixer. Yeah. Or that mixing tub that yeah. I just drilled a hole and put a put a drain in. Okay. It's very like it's not a lot of options for people that want to put showers and trailers no, like but that. But you yeah, the you job just kind of make, just make it up. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you have this trailer anyways. 
uh, when you when you unload the side by side, like I don't want to have to put up a tent next to it and yep. sleep in like a tent that's like flapping all night. That sucks. Yeah. No. Heck yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. It's we. Uh, it's going to be on my list the next time we go. So I, I've been applying for you know I've been putting in for points like like a madman the last few years and um so it's definitely I was like that's that's the ticket especially from someone that's from the midwest that doesn't truly like understand or i never really had the experience of like backpack country hiking or even just like a base camp with just tents you know i have like an rei tent that my family takes out you know in the backyard and that's about it so that's the way to go for sure Mm -hmm. yeah it's a good system so we're, we're kind of getting into that hunting thing now. Um, before we start, I mean, we're obviously going to talk about the doll sheep hunt, but before we get into that, I actually was just kind of reviewing some of the podcasts this morning on my way in and um, scrolling back through and kind of finding cherry picking the ones that I thought would, would interest me and interest the topic. But you had one in May that was about the, your pre hunt mentality, which I'm, I'm sure you understand. I think it was your solo, your solo one. Yeah. A little ranty. It was a little rant. No, it wasn't ranty. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but no, it was good. I mean, so you were by yourself and you were talking about it. And I don't know if Ben had the opportunity to hear that. I didn't. I didn't tell him about this morning. But I thought it was very, um, it was very informative and it was very uh, helpful. Um, you know, to to kind of balance your expectations or temper your expectations when you're heading west. So if you can, let's. I mean, a lot of our audience are going to be local here to the Midwest, and they have these pie in the sky or these dream visions of how elk or mule deer hunt should go. But if you want to kind of recap that for us, you don't have to give me the 30 minutes, the, the, the full 30 minutes again, but no. just kind of the, recap some of those highlight points of that, uh, that episode. Yeah. Honestly, it even happens like at the ranch on the outfit. Um, you know, there's people that it happens with turkeys, with yeah. everything. It's like, you know, you don't get something in the first half of the day and you kind of lose your, you like lose it basically and Mm -hmm. people get freaked out like really freaked out we've had um gosh like uh guys that have been doing deer hunts and like blown a stock or something like that in the middle of the hunt which is you still have a lot of days left and they've like called their wives and been like hey just i want to let you know like not coming home with anything this trip and i'm just like sure (laughs) um so (laughs) for us like we know you just got to keep like going day after day. Right. But especially if you haven't experienced like in Nebraska is not even really West, but you know, it goes a step further out West because I mean, even in Nebraska, like you're coming home to a nice warm house and you're not like, you don't have to go back to a cold tent. Um, So I think the biggest thing that gets people, like really frustrated is just like unrealistic expectations right off the bat. So, um, and some of it, you know, has to do, I think with just, you know, guys think that they should roll up and like within the first 30 minutes of the hunt, like bulls are going to be bugling like crazy and they're going to come running in and all this stuff. And like after that first 30 minutes, when it doesn't happen, you get really discouraged. And then, I don't know, it's like, you don't even know what to do after that. Um, yeah. it's, and then you, you add in, you take away some of this like cell phone service and you're used to things happening really fast and like driving somewhere and being there in five minutes. And so like all this stuff, you go into the back country or just even like out of service in the mountains, you know, and sleep in a tent or whatever by yourself, sleep in the back of your vehicle even. And three days is an eternity because there's just, there's like nothing else to do except hunt. And I think that that's what you got to keep in mind too, is like, there's nothing else to do but hunt. So just like go pick something and go sit on the top of a hill and just like sit there for a couple hours and see what happens and get, get comfortable with it. So that is like, I think that's a big expectation is you just think things are going to happen really fast and you're going to see animals a lot. And it's not going to be difficult type of a deal. So, um, but then on the other side of it from that is just like the animal size expectation, which is like definitely a thing. Um, Oh, for sure. You know, and, uh, and so that whole podcast I did on the expectations, I almost have to listen to it again and remember what I was talking about. But I talked about it like you have, uh, like on a soundboard, you have sliders for like your bass, your treble and your, um, mids so 
those all have to be balanced to make a song sound good, right? So everything kind of has to be balanced. Like, if you want, if, like, your whole deal is you want to backpack into an area, and there's a lot of guys that are backpack or bust. Um, if you want to backpack into an area, then, like, some other things are probably, if you want to shoot something, especially of size, you got to, like, have a different hunt tactic or, like, do something do something a little different. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it's yeah. like a lot of people are backpacker bust or they're like um, set on one thing. Like I'm only going to spot and stock. I'm not going to do anything else. Well, it's just like not really the way it works most yeah. of the time. I think you had a good, you had a good example on there and it's fresh in my mind. Cause I just listened to it like four hours ago, but um, I think it was like, you have those guys that are like, everything's cranked to a hundred. Right. So like, you want to backpack in five miles. You want to shoot a bull that's over 300 inches. You're not going to shoot anything else. And it's like, you got to like kind of temper your expectation. Oh, you know, not, not only do you want to shoot a bull 300, but you want to shoot it under 40 yards away. Like not all that stuff is realistic at one time. So if you want to shoot yeah. a 300, you may have to give up some of this stuff. Or if you want to backpack in, you may have to temper your expectation on shooting, you know, a, a world-class bull. So it's, uh, that's kind of what I took away from it too. And, yeah. and it's fun. It's funny that you mentioned like, you know, the guys just like going there and blowing, you know, you, you blow a stock and then you're like kind of done, you know, and even, even for us here, like trying to relate it to the Midwestern guy, you know, beginning of turkey season, we can hunt until noon, you know? And so this year we got on birds, they're, you know, firing off, you know, right off the roost. And it's like, okay, cool. It's going to happen. Right. And then, you know, come noon you still haven't got anything done you're just like and as you know like turkey season is like it's an early morning that next morning to get back up and get back after it like you can't stop mm -hmm. and yeah excuse me. excuse me um but we had uh sam davis on i don't know if you're familiar with sam but he lives I in sheridan yeah. yeah he's i know well. want to talk about a stone cold killer that guy <laughs> is he, he's the coolest dude ever i'm so glad we got a chance to talk to him but you know we we were kind of talking to him about i mean he's a really good spot and stock guy Mm -hmm. and he shoots a lot of nice deer and a lot of nice goats and he was like you're here like you have like 13 hours to hunt goats so like if you blow a stock like whatever like find the next one like go another mile away like you can't get discouraged because you may be on a stock for two hours by the time that you can get a, a you know a, a decent shot and then you blow it and he's like you just gotta keep hunting you have 13 hours a day to keep going and so i think that's very important for people to realize that not every hunt out West is a Steve Ranella hunt where it's like perfectly <laughs> set up or it's not a, you know, name your, name your TV show, right? Like not every, it, TV romanticizes that really heavy and they should because it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity, but you have to really temper like your expectations. is just like a normal dude. Also, if it's your first time never stalking an animal, yeah. you have to expect that you're going to mess up, yeah. you know, it's, Oh, it's part of the game. Like, yeah, yeah like, I, yeah. you know, I've sat in a tree stand my hunting career and that's it. Like, I'm not going to be great trying to stalk in on a mule deer from, you know, 300 yards away. Like, it's just, I, you just got to know that that's not how you are. So, yeah, no, that's, and it, that's just the game, right? Like, yep. the most experienced people, like Sam, he has days where he goes goose eggs, you know, yep. like oh, all I'm the sure. time yeah. where he doesn't even see anything. Um, I'm the same way. Like, everybody I know is the same way. And you start, you know, the, we'll get some questions and stuff sometimes. They're like, yeah, I went and did this and I did it for two days and I didn't see anything. Like, I don't know, you know, like kind of pissed off, like mad, yeah. like they didn't get what they came for. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> like, yeah. You gotta like adjust and yeah. shift areas and all that. Yeah. We're, we're in the midst of scouting right now in a new area and it's been a lot of gas money and time is what it's been and that's just what it is like yep it's just what it is i don't know yeah oh for sure for sure yeah i have some nice some nice deer in the the farm that i have permission on and i should have been just like every day i'm like hey check it out check it out check it out and it's like come time for the hunt like i may not get a single one of them you know what i mean so you just gotta you just gotta temper it so um we're kind of gearing up towards some of your alaska stuff i know uh we could talk we can, we're going to talk about the doll sheet thing but before we get into that um, I wanted to kind of give the listeners kind of a, a rundown. I know you had a really long lengthy video in detail about like the gear that you're taking, um, but kind of like the process of like 
before the flight there and before the hunt like so kind of gearing up towards the actual hunt because the actual hunt itself is super cool but um all the work that went beforehand um i mentioned that that was through sig right so it was uh, something you had set up through sig yeah yeah that was promoting the uh the new cross rifle yep. That, yep. that just came out and the versatility of it which is pretty crazy um it's nuts on that but yeah the it was a ton of logistical stuff and I'm in the middle of it currently doing the same logistical <laughs> oh, yeah. stuff just for a different hunt. Um, but yeah, logistics all the way down to like uh, still trying to be economical as you can. And like, you don't want to pack a lot of bags to get a ton of like baggage, especially over overage fees. But um, you want to be able to, you know, pack all your stuff as efficiently as possible. So yeah, I've got bow cases and bags and stuff and I'm trying to fit, everything in two bags and a bow case. That's my, that's my goal is to do two bags in a bow case. We'll see if I get to it. Um, but that's basically what that, yeah. that trip was too, is like a lot of logistics and just, um, especially like that hunt, it was, you know, 10 days with everything on your back. Yeah. Um, that's like, can get pretty heavy. So you, you want to, there's some things like extra, that you should make sure you have because it is such a long hunt, but because it is such a long hunt, you want to narrow, like you want to cut down as much as you can. So there was a lot of that going on, like packing, repacking, um, weighing bags and figuring out if I wanted to carry that or not, or take it with me. Um, so that was a lot of the pre hunt stuff was like, it was purely logistics and just trying to, especially like we went with quite a few people. I had Jonah with me was my camera guy. Um, and then, uh, gosh, then we had, you know, Daniel was the other hunter on it. We didn't hunt together. We split up, but he had a camera guy and then, and and then an extra from SIG with him. So just getting up there, there there's quite a few of us and just trying to make sure, and that time of year in Fairbanks, like you can't just find a hotel when you get there. <laughs> like you gotta yeah. make sure you're booked ahead. So trying to get all that stuff figured out and everybody's flights coordinated and all that stuff. Um, that's a pretty big part of it too. And it, it does get challenging when you start looking at times of when, you know, your charter leaves to when you leave and how you're gonna get around town and all that stuff. Yeah, and I so. mentioned that we had talked talk to Reese uh, Johnson. Um, his episode will air I mean, next week, but it won't really matter when your mm-hmm. timing's off. But, um, and like I said, he's going to ca- the caribou hunt with a rifle. And it's like, you know, I got five flights before I get to where I'm going to be. It's just like, you got <laughs> the challenge of n- navigating all those logistics. So if you see Jordan in the airport and she's got like all of her base layers and all of her jackets on, just, she didn't get it to fit in two bags in a, in a bow case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you add that into it, like getting things up there on the airlines isn't such a big deal, but and you start getting into like little 206s and super cubs and stuff like that we've got we have a fifth for this one we have a 50 pound weight limit which we get a little fudge time we get a little room on because we have to have a complete other flight in general for all the camera stuff yeah so that uh that's going to be like a gives us a little bit of wiggle room but still like 50 pounds is not that much and then you got to figure out like you can't fit a big ass bow case in a super cub like not no, gonna happen. no no not but, at all not a, now is that is that another first light sig sig hunt or is that just one that you have on yourself for yourself it's actually that's gonna be a, a meat eater hunt for Giannis's on the hunt um, Perfect. Cool. YouTube, youtube series so that's awesome that's what that awesome. one will be for yeah yeah, I like those little mini series that those guys are doing. Mm-hmm. That's really yeah. cool. And and uh, you don't realize it, but Yanni is a really tall individual. He's very he's tall. A, he's a very. I saw them. Very they fit. did. What did they do? The um, meat eater live tour, when they were mm-hmm. like going through. And I went up to Cleveland and uh, I did like the whole VIP experience and stuff with those guys, so I could do like the meet and greet. This was probably mm-hmm. four years ago. I want to say twenty eighteen. And like we like bumped into each other as they were leaving in the hotel, and I'm like, dude, like I'm six one, and he made me feel small, and I was like, oh my gosh, man, like, but they were super down to earth, like they were literally like on their way out, and he like sat and talked to me for a couple of minutes, and it was like, sweet, and it was just like, mm-hmm. you know, what more could you ask for? But you did mention Daniel. How was it like shooting with like 
the the goat of three gun like was there any pressure there to, yeah. to... daniel horner i've been around daniel a lot before so yeah we're pretty familiar with each other but the thing about daniel is he's like if you have a question about anything like he will sit down and run through it with you and not yeah. make you feel like an idiot and uh i think um he's just like the greatest little guy ever um <laughs> just you know from Obviously, he's very good at his, like, discipline and what he does. Um, he's very good at that, but he's also very good at teaching that yeah. and, um, and you know, helping you improve what whatever, improve your grip, um, improve your stance and, like, how you're shooting when you're laying prone. And he does all that stuff with you and just puts it in very much, like, simple layman's terms. And it's, yeah, he's... He's the best, and he's just like a beast on the mountain. I wish I, I w- wish I could have got it, on the hunt, but we ended up killing a ram about at the same time in different That's locations. Awesome. So, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we uh we just picked up his uh, M400 uh competition rifle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do have we do we get any back there yet? I know I did like the promo for it. I think we have at least one or one, two, and yeah. it's sweet. That's a sweet mm-hmm. little rifle for sure. Yeah, uh, one of our, our gun buyer here at Advance, um, he also shoots competitively on the, on like the pistol side for what Infinity. Yeah, Infinity, yeah. and, and uh, he he knows all those guys, and you know Daniel and Lena and and the whole crew. Mm-hmm. So that's a uh, yeah, it would be interesting. I think I would be a little bit intimidating trying to shoot in front of him, but you know it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just he's just a dude that yep. likes to help people, so it's good. That's awesome. How did you, uh, I know we talked about it a little bit, but how did you like that cross? I know we, we carry them here as well, but I think it's a super cool rifle for sure. Yeah. Um, do you guys notice that my cross was a little bit different? I don't, I don't know if I did. I'll just let mm-hmm. you go look at that. I'll no, have to go I back. Was... And I'll, I'm going to go grab one now in the warehouse and come back and watch <laughs> yeah. the video and just be like, <laughs> You're like, Oh, that's not exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I was just shooting a, a cross, like a, It'll be a new little rendition of the cross. It'll be coming out sometime. I don't know when. Um, the supply <laughs> chain and things have been so no, crazy. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, but just that cross in general. This would have been last year. Would have been my third year shooting it. Um, this will be my fourth. And you know, it is just um, for like an out of the box rifle. You know, just when you buy right off the shelf, like. Yep. That 6.5 is what I've shot the most. I've shot the 308 a little bit, shot the 277 a little bit um, in the very early stages of the cross, but I've <clears throat> been shooting the 6.5 a lot. And especially with uh, SIG's like elite hunter ammunition, like Daniel will yeah. tell you too, like he's ran the most. I'm more of like, I would call myself, I really like testing gear, but like I'm yeah. more of like an end user on rifles, especially. Yeah. Um, Daniel really gets into the nitty gritty and tests everything, but he's like the tolerances that they have on that six five ammo coming out of their coming out of the factory is like really tight and it's really good. Um, so and like my six fives have shot extremely well. And then just the versatility of being able to, you know, fold the stock, which obviously isn't anything like super new, but yeah. that is really awesome. Um, the most the thing that I think uh, people like the most, or when I talk to them about it, like they're really interested in is being able to change calibers. Um, and they, they'll they get to a point where they're selling more barrels and being able to do that stuff. But um, basically what you can do is you you buy a rifle, you get it in you know, the 3865 Creedmoor, um, or hopefully eventually the 277, and there's more calibers going to be coming out. But if you want to have that one rifle and you want to have a 308 barrel and you want to have a 65 Creedmoor barrel, um, basically you can change out the bolt face um, on the bolt, which is really easy. And then you basically screw a barrel off and you screw the new barrel on and you can change calibers with the same rifle. Um, and those barrels aren't like serial numbered, so they don't have to go through an FFL to run them through it's your um like the action is what's yeah, yeah. yep. on it so uh that's super like that's super versatile especially for oh, somebody that doesn't want a bunch of different um rifles you know they want different calibers for different 
you know, applications, but they don't want to have a bunch of rifles, don't have storage for it or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's just a super versatile little, little guy. I like it. Yeah. You know, I like it a lot. No, it's sweet. Yeah. And like I told you, we have like the first light one here as well as just like their, their typical black and, and whatever. And I was doing some pictures for like our on light, like for our product, our product photography or whatever. I'm like, man, this thing is legit. I didn't know mm -hmm. about the barrel thing though, but that's sweet. Like I could see, like, I'm not one, I'm not a guy that like wants to have like an entire safe full of firearms. Right. I just like, like mm -hmm. to have what I need and what I can use. And so just being able to buy a barrel and be like, okay, I'm going to use a, a two seven seven or I'm going to use a six five. And then if I want to go like more big game, you know, get into like three Oh eight or whatever. So that's SIG's thing too. Yeah. They do it with the, you know, P three sixty five, P three twenty. you can do the customizing. Know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Being able to switch things out with a different, different grips and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, we teased it enough, but I want to get into the hunt <laughs> itself because I know it, it was a lot, more challenging than what the, uh, the seven or 10 minute video showed. But if you want to go ahead, like your, your boots on the ground, you're finally at the point where you're glassing, like take us through from that kind of point on. Yeah. And you know, the video itself, that was kind of made to be like, not just about the hunt. You know what I mean? Like that's the way yep. for like kind of does their, their stuff. It wasn't made yep. to be like a day by day type of deal. Yep. So, um, I got some feedback on that, that, people weren't super happy with not being able to see like all the struggles that we had in like a day by day. But it's just, that wasn't never, that wasn't even like the production plan to start with. So, uh, anyways, with that out of the way, yeah, we got on the ground, blue sky, like super nice weather. Um, we got flown into an airstrip and just like hung out. We had, there was a, our packer had been in there for a couple days. He'd seen some Rams um, when we got flown in, we walked over to our camp and set everything up and we were, uh, we had rams like right up this drainage that was right in front of us, like right up at the head of it. And we're like, well, I mean, there's really no use of moving on because they're, we can see them. So, and there's, they, we were, we're pretty sure that there were two legal rams in there. So, um, we wanted to wait for them to get closer and not, we didn't want to go up there and bump them before the season even opened. Oh, sure. That, yeah good yeah so we stayed there overnight and we watched those rams they hung out up in the, the head of that and started coming our direction the day before season and actually um rounded through a uh rounded through a saddle and went to the next drainage over and we were kind of at the bottom so we had to go up to the to the saddle and go over to be able to see them and uh so we got pretty close and then when midnight hit that night it's still pretty light all day, like all 24 yeah, yeah. hours, still like pretty light. Um, so we decided we were going to try at midnight, we we're going to get up and try to get um, to the saddle and see if we can see those sheep and just try to get one killed like right off the bat. And uh, I remember we made it most of the way to the top of this little, like this little hill thing and uh, the clouds came in. And that took away what light we had. So we just turned around and went back down. And it was like, that was kind of our first taste of the rocks that we were going to be in. And, um, yeah, I think that Jonah especially was like, what the <laughs> hell did he <laughs> The boy from Iowa <laughs> or Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. We woke up one of those next mornings and he goes, well, my first night in a tent was pretty good. Yeah, we, he actually, we uh, we ragged on him a little bit, or his friends were ragging on him, because uh, he, like, did, like, no physical preparedness for that. Like, he was just, like, everyone was ragging on me, because I'm just like, well, here I am, I'm in Alaska, because I was asking him about, like, you know, getting acclimated with the altitude, and, like, did he have any problems with things? Like, well, luckily, we didn't do a lot of moving. Yeah, you know, so we, it was pretty slow moving. A lot of slow, methodical yeah. moving, and so he's like, I... Well. I, 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 I I acclimated it pretty well, but yeah, we, we were ragging him a little bit cause he like did like no like physical prep <laughs> before the, before the hunt. Yeah. And really elevation wise, like we were only at like five or 6,000 feet, which oh, yeah, man, you're good. It, it was a little bit of, of whatever, but here it's about the same as here. So that's one nice thing about some of those Alaska hunts is they're, it's not like you're at 12,000 feet, like you are in Colorado or something like that, where that really sucks. Um, yeah, a lot of times you're a little bit lower, but, uh, yeah. that was fun. It seems like the, uh, the magic number for most people is around that eight to 9,000 feet. Like, it seems like everyone I've talked to, that's where they felt like 
that's the difference between people. Like, you know, when we were talking the bow, you know, it was like above the nine is where I started to feel it kind of below the nine. It's like, eh, you may have like a headache or you might be a little bit of shortness of breath, but you're really, you're really not doing horrible down there. So. No, no. Yeah. The elevation can really kick, uh, take it out of you though. So, um, yeah, so we just had to go back and go to bed and figure out what we we're going to do the next morning. So got up, packed up everything, went to the saddle. Um, it was still like nice bluebird day that opening, opening day. Uh, my guide and I like started gaining some elevation and he saw two small rams, which were with the two big rams earlier that, or the day before when we saw them roll over and, um, saw the two little rams come in our direction. We dropped down through the saddle, picked Jonah and um, our packer up, and, like, started heading towards those sheep, made a little bit of a stock. And I got set up, at, I think I was at, like, 300 yards, and those little rams were out in front of us and batted for 45 minutes or so, and the big ones never showed. We never could figure out where the heck they went. So <clears throat> they wrapped around the hill, and... Um, we got some elevation, got on a ridge that was like a spine to like the main ridge that split the whole mountain range. And uh, we got on that little spine and we're like, all right, well, in the morning, we'll just make our way along that, get to the big ridge and we'll hunt our way the entire time. Um, and then the weather went to hell yeah. <laughs> pretty fast. And uh, yeah, the next morning we woke up and I, think we didn't leave the tent till probably five six o'clock at night maybe even seven and uh we just laid there in the tent listened to it rain and the wind was blowing like hell and um yeah that was it, that kind of our first taste i remember in the video you were like well i now know what it feels like to be a crazy person like oh, just, just sitting and just listening to <laughs> your tent flop around for hours on mm. end and not being able to do anything. Well, you, you to... talk about me, like I'm kind of antisocial anyways. And I had an in reach and a sat phone that I could call home with. Jonah didn't have anything. And he's a social. <laughs> <laughs> he's over there like Jordan. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he was. What? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Well, um, like you said, the, the video wasn't necessarily about the, the, the struggle and the day to day and just like yeah. being a quote unquote hunting video, but I know it had, had a lot of connection with your dad. And I think that's what made it really special. And going back to the way that they produce these films is like, Max does a very good job at trying mm -hmm. to elicit emotion of uh, people. And, mm -hmm. um, so we, let's get to the point. I know you had, I mean, you know what moment I'm getting ready to touch, but you had a very touching moment when the, 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 uh, the hunt actually came, you know, to the point where you had the shot. So let's kind of run through yep. the, the shot and your post shot and the, like, just like the emotion that was um, captured in that video. Yeah. And I don't want to, I want, don't want to drag it out too much, but the rest of the hunt was just basically a fight with weather, um, a big fight with weather. And um, when it, there's something that happened too, that was like never even discussed. I don't even know if, if Jonah discussed it or not, but um, we, it had snowed the night before we had made it to this ridge where we had seen some sheep, and there was fog and snow and stuff moving in and out. And way across the drainage, like in a, on another mountain, basically, we saw uh, four rams bedded. And it was so far, I mean, it was like three miles. You couldn't really tell what they were. But um, the guide could see like a bit of mass coming down to here, which usually you can imagine what tips Ooh, out. Wow. Um, so he's probably that. So we, the plane was supposed to pick us up on Friday morning this was Wednesday afternoon and uh, we were a ways from the, from the, um, the airstrip. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So we were a ways from the airstrip and we're just like, okay, we have to, we have to make a decision here. Like at one of these points, we're going to have to pull the plug and we're going to have to walk back to the airstrip and we're done hunting. Um, so where we were was kind of in sheep country, but we could see these other rams on the other side of the drainage. So the guide was basically, it was in the afternoon, and the guide was like, all right, we had kind of a one-on-one, -on -one and it was like, we have to have a little bit of a, we have to have a game plan here. Like he said, I think we can make it to him. I don't know. We're going to have to go back down through the brush line and cross this big drainage. And he's like, I don't know if we can make it um, in time, but we can try. Or 
we're already in sheep country. We can just keep making our way through these other things and, uh, and be able to maybe get on a sheep. And I told him, I was like, if you think we can make it, I would rather go after the ones that we can see instead of the ones that might be here, like an easy route, you know? And he's like, F it, let's go. Like we've slept enough the last eight days for like a year. (laughs) So let's get it and go. So it was, we left that ridge at five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, We made our way down, kept an eye on the sheet the whole time. They stayed bedded, um, made our way through the brush line, went back up through the brush line, which is like, not, it sucks. Like (laughs) you're going through alders and there's like bears there too. And you're in the dark, like fumbling around with stuff. Um, it was not easy, but at one o'clock in the morning, we were like a thousand yards underneath the sheep and we had just broke through the brush line and we're on this little hill and the sheep were bedded like a thousand yards above us and they were all still there. And so we were like, all right, we just need to like hang out and try to sleep a little bit. Well, it had been so cold and like rainy and snowy and nasty and that everything was melting. It was our first clear night. And it was freaking cold. And we were on this hillside like this, and we just pulled our sleeping bags out and wrapped ourselves up in them and was, like, trying to sleep, which didn't really happen. You know, it was, we didn't yeah. have pads out or anything, so it was super cold. Um, and all of us woke up the next morning, like, freaking frozen. Um, like, our guide was running up and down the hill trying to get warmed up. Jonah was running up and down the hill trying to get warmed up. <laughs> Um, yeah, everybody was trying to thaw out, but the sheep were still there. Um, so we just watched them for a little while. They made their way over through this little rock system and we're like, all right, we got to go now. So, um, we went up and got on their elevation, made our way over. And, uh, yeah, so we got to this, there's like this big slab of rock that had a big crack in it and we hadn't seen the sheep for a while. And, uh, the guide goes and pokes his head through there. And I remember thinking like, he didn't have any reaction at first when he poked his head through, like, no, oh, they're, they're right there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, they're gone. Like, we were screwed. And yeah. uh, about that time, he goes, they're, he's like, they're close. They're like 100 yards. True. And I was not expecting him to be that close. So they were at 100 yards. Jonah, like, kind of gets over on him with the camera, and he looks at me with huge eyes, and he's just like, they're like, <laughs> right there. Man, so I, like, creep up through the rocks and get my rifle set up, and they're in a, like, in a line walking away from me and kind of jumping across the rocks. And not, like, running, but they knew something was a little weird. And um, we, I was on the sheep. I thought it was going to be the back one that I was going to shoot, which he would have been legal anyways, but um, the guy's like, calm down, like, give me time to just make sure you get the right one that you want. And it was, like, one of them that was in the middle. I think it was second from the back. And I just stayed on him, and the guide was, like, uh, 150, 170, 175, 190, 200. And they didn't have that much further to go to get out of there. And finally, at, like, 2.30, the, he stopped and was, like, quartering away to us. And I was, like, dude, I'm going to shoot him. And he's, like, all right, go ahead. So I shot him. And it hit him, like, um, you know, behind the last rib and went up through, like, his brisket. And he was, like, kind of stepping around. And um, I went to shoot him. I shot another time, and I didn't hold. I, w- I didn't dial. I was holding my mills. And uh, I just didn't hold mills because I was, like, a little amped. Must have been. <laughs> so I missed right under him, and then I figured out what I did, and I shot him again, and that was the end of it. But, um yeah, it was, like, especially what had happened the previous, like, walking all night to get to him, and, like, that was just a, it was hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, like, I remember the weight off of our shoulders, all of our shoulders, I mean, my shoulders, sure. probably especially, but just being, like, holy shit, we did it, and then I was, like, I don't think that would happen any other way. Like, it would, I mean, yeah. it wouldn't have been as cool of a story as if we would have shot him the first day in mm. the set. Oh, for, for yeah. sure. It's yeah. As the, as the, uh, the filmmaker, you're like, you kind of need the struggle to make a cool climax. Right. And then, but as like the hunter, you're just like, I want to get this done. Like I want to get it shot. I want to, oh, you know, I got yeah. people counting on me and mm-hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like bottom of the ninth, we just like 
did it. Somewhere. That's awesome. Yeah, Jonah didn't. He didn't mention that. We just knew that you had the struggle with the weather and being mm-hmm. socked in for most of you know most of the trips, and that's what kind of yeah. where I thought the emotion was from. But now it's just even cooler now that you tell the story and hearing it from you, especially like just how much of a hell that you had to go through to even get it done. Yep. You know, so that makes yep. that makes the, the story even much better. And then I know Ben. I mean, he, he's going to say the same thing. But like when you called your dad or you texted your dad, and oh god, and, uh, yeah. and then you know, that's just the emotion running from you. I mean, I. I, I I mean, I'm a 34 year old guy and I cried like, you know, my six year old daughter because it was such a beautiful moment. It really was. And um, and as hunters yeah. and as people that are like passionate about this, we know like how much adrenaline you had and just like the dump and just like all the extra emotion, all the extra baggage that you had. And so it just made it so oh, much more crazy. special. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. And that those do, you know, all of us, like we all struggled the same thing together and they were all there for especially Jonah. Um, yeah. You know, they were all there, like, for me and never quit the whole time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it wasn't – when we decided to go, like, overnight, I think that everybody was like, oh, God. But, you know, yep. nobody ever said anything. They are like, let's go kill this thing. Yeah, and uh, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, uh, that was touching for sure. And then, you know, in, in pure form, they, they wrapped it up with your dad, and it was just like, ugh, stab the, stab the knife through my heart even more because <laughs> your dad, he's, he's just like – scruff looking rancher and he's just like in tears talking about how proud he is mm-hmm. of you and i'm sure that was just um yeah it was it was uh it was very touching and so i i think that was probably in, in my opinion that's probably the one of the best hunting youtube videos i've seen in a really long time like a really long time so yeah they hit the heartstrings for sure yeah, yeah. max is the man oh he, he yeah. edits very well yeah yeah it's very well and jonah shouted him out when we were talking to him. he's like i can't take any credit for it. he's like i was just holding the camera you know, and, and being there for the moment, you know, he, he got some really cool stuff too, but it was, uh, it was cool. It was definitely a really cool video. So yeah, well, that, uh, that was a big one. We've been going on for about an hour now. I'll let you, I'll let you wrap it up. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, especially as you're prepping for that caribou hunt, you got some packing to do. So, um, go <laughs> ahead and let's, uh, let's uh, promote yourself and uh, where people can find you. Of course, like always, we'll put all this information in the show notes and, and all that, but uh, where can people find you if they want to go check you out? Yeah, I think probably Instagram is the best place just at Jordan dot bud, um, B U D D on, on the Instagram. And then if you just go to YouTube and type my name in, I think all the videos yeah. come up. So it should take you to the channel and uh, yeah, we're going to, Hopefully, I've been filming some of our scouting stuff this year, so hopefully we'll have some more videos coming in for too much longer, and uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, Jordan, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I know we both were really looking forward to it, and uh, you know, best of luck with the caribou hunt, and we definitely look Thanks. forward to continuing our relationship and maybe touching back base with you not before too long. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. All right, everyone, that is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jordan. What an incredible experience and a memory that I'm sure she'll have for a lifetime. As always, we appreciate you listening. Please give us a rating and share this episode with a friend. And until next time, enjoy the pursuit.